Good morning, Village Bible. My name is Jackie, and I'm excited to be here to worship with you today. Why don't you stand on your feet, and let's put our hands together like this. It's a beautiful day. We serve an amazing God, so let's give him our worship today because he's so worthy. of your praise gathered under one name we are a tide that's rising and we cannot be contained Let's sing it out. Sing mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah. The battle is won. And nothing can stand against our God. We stand on your victory and shout.
working all things out, you're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my
Well, we've wrapped up this baggage series, and God has done some amazing things. This next song, Graves into Gardens, is about God breathing new life into things. So let's continue in worship as we sing. Oh, I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. And we sing together. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, I'm not afraid to show you. Oh, 
who are breathing new life into things, God. You are the only one who can do it, and we are so grateful to you, God. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, thrilled to have you here. You can have a seat for me for just one moment. My name is Craig. I get the privilege of pastoring uh, this campus of Crossroads Church, and so excited that you can join us this Memorial Day weekend. Who's already dreaming about what they get to grill tomorrow? Amen. Come on, you got to grill something, right? Me and Tay, anyway, right? So excited that you're here. A couple things I want to just make you aware of. Uh, today is a family service, right? So we do not have elementary classes for the kids today. Any kids in the house? All right, I see some kids. Any kids in the house? Let me hear you. All right. So uh, you guys get to stay in service today, but next week we're going to have uh, uh, kids' services all the way from birth through fifth grade, so uh, you'll be able to be dismissed starting next week for that. Now listen, we are still needing some volunteers for that, so if you can help volunteer at all and serve for a service and go to a service or serve once a month, uh, we would love to have your hand in that. So uh, whether it's this service or the 1030, uh, we could still use some help with that, so please reach out and let us know. Uh, something else exciting that's happening is that today we get to hear from my brother Tay, uh, who's preaching for us today. And uh, he's had some new additions to his family, and so they just gave birth to uh, him and his wife Sam to new baby Layla. So two kids to keep up with in their household now. So if he looks a little tired when you see him, that's because the, you know they got a new baby in the house, and so they're enjoying that. So... Uh, thankful for you guys, though, man. So as you guys know, though, uh, two great ways to give. The best and easiest way is probably online at crossroadschurch.us. You can set up automatic uh, stuff there so you never have to worry about, like, oh, I don't know, did I give or not? Uh, it'll be taken care of. Uh, the other way is in the black box in the back there. And it really helps to advance the gospel here in Carol Stream and around the world. And so let me pray for our offering, and then I'll invite Tay up to share with us today. Heavenly Father, so thankful to uh, be able to worship you uh, with songs like that, to remember, God, your power in our lives, that no matter what we're going through in life, uh, that you have the power to overcome it, Lord, and to see us through. Uh, Lord, we trust in you today, and uh, I just put our full faith in you, Lord. I pray for your word as it's preached, uh, that you would just help us to apply it, uh, to be courageous, uh, to hear your voice, and to do it. I uh, pray for our offering as well. You'd use it for your glory, and we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's welcome Tay this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Craig, for that warm welcome. And uh, it's great to see my baby girl on the, on the picture there. I tell you, when you have girls, they just kind of wrap you around your finger. And uh, their finger, rather. So I'm excited for that. My firstborn, Harvey, and my wife, Samantha. So thank you again for the warm welcome. Glad to be here. I'm going to move that over. I get a little bit excited when I preach. And so if it sounds like I'm yelling, I'm not yelling at you. Uh, the Word of God is living and active. And so it's going to be living and active this morning. So pray with me, and we'll dive right in. To our God, who is good, worthy of all praise and all glory, here now, Lord, we stand to proclaim your word. Give strength, give clarity of thought, precision of speech, that your word may go forth. Lord, would you do the increase today? While I'm preaching in your people's heart, that you would get praise and glory from this. We pray this in your name. Amen. So as Pastor Craig said, I serve as the student pastor here at Crossroads here, um, and exciting, always exciting to see students in the room, some of my favorite people uh, besides my own family, so uh, happy to have you here. Uh, as does the adults, you all have a special place in my heart too because you keep bringing your students, so keep doing that <laughs> uh, as well. Psalm 147, Psalm number 147 uh, is where we're going to be uh, in our text today for the hour and a half that I have. And so each year, each year, millions of people uh, turn on their televisions uh, and they view these various singing competitions, right? Such as you got American Idol or The X Factor or The Voice or The Mass Singer or AGT, America's Got Talent, Songland, The X Factor, the list goes on and on, or even High School Musical. Yeah, the new one's pretty cool. And as I named off these shows, some of you are sitting in that seat like, yeah, I remember that show. Or like, man, the Mass Singer this year has been great. 
And as you sit there, you recall the singer and you uh, recall the song, but not only the singer, but you recall their story, the singer's story, their journey from hurt to harmony, from wreck and ruin to reward, from tragedies to triumph from pain and suffering to a brighter day. And we all connected, or we connected with these stories over a song. Singing, singing is the act of producing musical noise with the voice, what we just did, praising God. Singers perform uh, music when they sing, either with music or solo. And it connects with us. The rhythm, the tones, the beat, the lyrics, it it takes us to a place of feel-good. Maybe even some remembrance. Praise. It is a song. And so can I press to us this morning that the thankfulness of our lives will produce an anthem of praise. The thankfulness of our lives will produce an anthem of praise. Why? Because God is exalted in and over our lives always. God is exalted in and over our lives always. You see, God isn't most glorified in us when we are most self-giving. No, pastor, theologian, John Piper quotes this. He says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. And when we take our eyes off the Lord and get consumed and obsessed maybe with our own petty problems and we we then neglect prayer and praise that we lose the luster of our souls and our souls lose their song. In other words, in other words this, we lose our glow, our gleam and glory and become dull, dark and drained when we lose our song, when we lose our, our praise. Why? Because you in those chairs, you watching online, have so much, so much to praise God for. As Chicagoans would say, you guys have so much to be thankful for. Your active limbs, your, your home, your, you go down the list. Everybody in this room has something to praise God for. And so the question I want us to walk through together as we go to Psalm number 147, 1 through 11, is this, how do I form a proper posture of praise? How do I form a proper posture of praise? So if you're there, let me give you a quick overview. The Psalms is split into five books. You have a diverse collection of these sacred Psalms. And in the history of Israel, as well as the Christian church, uh, these Psalms would be sing or, uh, or, or gathered around in both a public and a private worship setting. And so for the intellect in the room, uh, in reading the Psalms, you will find uh, introduction between the historical and the geographical, as well as the cultural background of God and his people. On the attitudinal side of it, the feeling side of it, the book of Psalms really enhance one's piety or your devotion, and it will stimulate your praise to God or, or your love for God. And so Psalm 147 reads this. It says, praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. Let me pause there for a little bit, if we can develop the exposition a little bit. It says, to whom are we to praise? Help me out a little bit. To whom are we to praise? You got it. Yeah, God. He says, praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to him. Like, praise the Lord, capital O-O-R-D, Yahweh, right? To where they wouldn't even pronounce or write his name sometime in the Jewish culture. The proper name of God. Praise him. For his power, for his understanding, for his commandments, for his word, for his statues, for his love, and for the judgment he gives to his people. He says, praise the Lord. So if there's anything we can get out of this text today, is point number one is this. We are called to praise God. We, we, we are called to praise God. The Lord's people are to praise and sing and make medley to the Lord. Why? If you look at the text... It says this, for it is pleasant. And a song of praise is fitting. Why complain when we have so much stuff that's good? He says, we praise the Lord because it is pleasant, it is fitting. Praise is fitting as it is a proper tribute to the Lord for his wondrous works, for his tender mercies, and for his loving kindness. Praise is 
pleasant because it's coming from a grateful heart. Praise is good because God is good. Psalm 146, 147, 148, 149 all begins with praise the Lord. It all ends with praise the Lord. Psalm 150 goes over to praise the Lord. But I love at the end of Psalm 150, it says, but then let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Angels and the heavenly hosts are commanded to praise the Lord. All inhabitants of the earth are instructed to praise the Lord. Let me give you a little scripture. Make sure I'm preaching Bible up here. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord. When you hear the words of your mouth, Psalms 138, 4. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and extol him, all you people. That's Romans 15 and 11. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all of the earth, Isaiah 12 and 5. And, and then he says in Psalm 150, praise him with tambourine and dancing and praise him with strings and flutes. And it goes on and on and it declares that we should praise him with a loud voice because we have breath. And so I thought today what would make sense, if I can use for illustration, is, is just a little bit. Joe, can I have you a little bit? How about Emily? Can you come up? Who else I got in the room? Uh, I, they, they are disinfected here. And we're going to have a little, uh, a little jam session, all right? Which instrument you want? Whatever you want. Tambourine? You want the cowbell? There we go. Some maracas? Yeah. Uh, who else? Who else? Can you come up? All right. Whatever you want in there. <laughs> That's a little triangle. I don't know if it's going to click with that. All right. Here we go. We are going to have a jam session, right? Because we're called to praise God. And all we're going to say is, God is good. God is good. God is good. Whatever beat y'all want to go to, okay? So I'll let you pick the beat. You ready? God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. There you go. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a hand for, for helping Pastor Tay out there. <laughs> Thanks. I, I get it. Like, we praise God for everything with the tambourine, with the music, with our voice, with our lives. We are called to praise God. He says, why it is fitting, it's pleasant. Verse 2, verse 2, the Lord builds up Jerusalem. And he gathers the outcasts of Israel. And sometimes in our prayers, however, not all times in our lives are we ready to praise God. When God seems that he did not come through, maybe it's the medical test that came back positive. Or it's a wayward child or the spouse exclaims they now want a divorce. Or just in our lives sometimes where we think maybe God seems very, very far away. And praise is the last thing that will bubble up in our heart and we declare to God. We cannot see his goodness and the circumstances screams that God has maybe forgotten about us. You think about over the last 15, 19 months, the loss and the hurt and the pain and the isolation but to praise God in these difficult times, I think that's what it means that we bring a sacrifice of praise. That all, not every time we, we come to praise God or we open up the scriptures or we get down in prayer or is our hearts pumping with praiseful life. Like we, we bring him this sacrifice of praise. Because why? God is still good. And God still can be trusted. God is still in control. And he can still change any situation for our good. Remember Romans 8 and 28, and we know that things work together for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. We choose to praise God despite the storms. He is honored and our faith grows deeper. It's a pleasant song. Well, the text lift to us because the Lord also brings restoration. He brings hope. He brings redemption is why we should praise his name. We praise God as redeemed people. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. Verse 2, he gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. How good is the Lord that he would save his people? 
For the psalmist pins that he should be praised because he reached down and saved them, took them out. He gathered them. He built back up like he's doing the work of redemption, the work of restoring. You see, this psalm is a, uh, a, a pre-exilic crowd, meaning Israel is now returning back to Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity. And frankly, Israel, uh, it's like, has it dawned on you the reason why you're going back to Jerusalem, going back to new, new walls, is not because of your good, not because of your degrees, but because of a good God. He says, frankly, do you realize it's the Lord who is building up Jerusalem? It's the Lord who is gathering the outcasts of Israel. It's the Lord who is healing the brokenhearted. These people were described as stiff-necked, complainers, backstabbers, idol worshipers, people of God. But he says, I will rebuild the place where you belong. Jerusalem. The walls are rebuilt. He says, I'm going to give back to you what was taken away. I'll make sure that your people and your armies will win this time. They're going to prevail. He says, you are being brought back to me, and he is active in doing it because he is gathering. He's taken from scattered places and sources, and he's doing the work, and he's bringing the outcasts back, and he's rebuilding. God is doing that. And he's healing. Look at verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I I think, of course, no one does this better than Jesus to gather and heal back. But I I think about uh, the movie Sing, if some of you have seen it. (laughs) We're, We're Buster Moon, right? He owns a once grand theater packed out with people every week. And and so he's going through tough times. And Buster Moon will fight and go until that theater gets back. His prized possession, his baby, gets back to where it used to be. And so now facing the crumbling of his dream, uh, he has one final choice to try to restore this theater. And so one of the quotes in the movie, Buster is talking to Eddie like this this llama or this sheep. And he says, my theater has been going through some tough times, some rough times. And he says, what should I do? Eddie says, a car wash. Buster Moon says, no, my next show will be, drum roll please, a singing competition. And Eddie says, who wants to see another one of those? Buster Moon, Buster Moon says, everyone, your neighbor, the grocery store manager, that chicken over there, he says, real talent will come in. And I think about this this movie because it's people whose songs of their heart have been buried. Their talents, the the picture uh, of that pig, uh, as they step out of their shell coming back on stage, Buster Moon gathered the people together, and and what was once dampered and what was once shut down, they would sing again. And maybe that hit home to you today. As you are sitting in that chair or even as you got in the car this this morning, many folks around this, this world haven't smiled in the last 21 months. We think our song has been taken away from us. We don't don't realize as we sit around the table with our family or our friends or for those who are still working as we go and punch the clock of the blessing we have. Maybe a circumstance in our lives that has taken away our song. And you attest today that, yes, I have been healed because my heart has been broken. I've lost a family member along the way. I've been in the conversation where the family wants to split. My health doesn't seem as strong as it used to be. And everything else falls flat except for the Lord is the one who's healing. He heals the brokenhearted. So returning back to their promised land, these these exiles had a strong reason to praise God. And you better believe that they needed some healing. They were brokenhearted seeing Solomon temples uh, uh, taken away. They were sad being under captivity. They didn't have any hope. They didn't have any peace. And yet they declared it is the Lord who heals. But God 
here healed their desperate souls and he bound up their wounds. His faithful hands hold his people. God's faithful hands hold his people. You, I, your grandchildren, family to come, God's faithful hand will uphold us. Look at verse 4. He determines the number of the stars and he gives all of them their names. Great is the Lord and abundant in power. For his understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. I love this. We praise God because his revelation is firm. His revelation is firm. Meaning this. He's not going to wake up the next day and change his mind. Matter of fact, he's not even going to go to sleep. He's not going to go back on what he created. He talks about the stars. He, he reminds us here of God's ability and his greatness. For it's the Lord who numbered the stars and named them all. When you name something, you, you assume total care over that. For both of our children, both Harvey and Layla Joel, Harvey was born. We didn't name him until the next day. <laughs> Layla was born. We didn't name her until about five hours after. All right, so we, we had three of our favorite names. We wrote them on the board, and we went through the list as the hours gone by. Nope, she doesn't look like that. Nope, she doesn't look like that. Oh, what's this name mean? Blah, 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 blah. Then we went to the whiteboard, and we circled both our names. Now, that's me naming two children. <laughs> the Lord named the stars. Billions and billions and billions of galaxies and stars and planets. He named them and he placed them and he know them all by name. Do you see the great power of our Lord? And if I can pause right there and have a little shout moment, because guess what? As he named the stars, he knows exactly about you and me. Your now, your next, your future, your tomorrow, whatever it is, God knows it all. Only God can count and place and name and know the stars of his creation. And he knows the exact count. You and I may estimate or astronomers may say these things and we're only guessing of this theoretical space. But, but God knows. He determines the number of stars and he gives them all their place and by name. This is God's omniscient God, omnipotent God. God being full of power, his understanding is infinite, far beyond what you and I could think. How is it, think about this, that God can make a brown cow eat green grass and produce white milk? <laughs> I don't know, but it's good. Everything the Lord does, when he does it, why he does it, it is good for us. That would have been a place for us to move, but we didn't. Take comfort from this text and the goodness of God, knowing he understands all about us, all about you, our feelings, our hope, our circumstances, our dreams. And guess what? He knows them better than ourselves. Great is our Lord, abundant in power. He's not weak. He's not unfit. He can hold us all together. His understanding is beyond measure. Verse 7 goes like this. He says, sing again. So first we had praise for it's good, and now we sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our Lord with the lair. He covers the heavens with the clouds, and he prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills, and he gives food to the beasts. And even to the young ravens that cry, his delight is not in the strength of horse. Or in the strength of man's legs. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. And those who hope in his steadfast love. As we understand God's uh, majesty and his, his power in both the heavenly places and the earthly places, our response should be to sing. To be to praise. 
Because God provides for his people. He provides the needs of his people. After placing them back into the promised land, he provides. It says he calls rain, which makes the grass grow. When the grass grows, the, the cattle eat. And when the cattle eat, they can be slain and we can eat. And when we can eat, our family can go on. And the list goes on and on. And I love that the text puts in there that he even cares for the ravens. If you remember this the Jewish culture, uh, the ravens were animals that were forbidden. You, you shouldn't touch them. You shouldn't, you shouldn't kill them. They, they, they brought kind of darkness on. And even God would care for those who are outcast. So we fear, we are to fear and hope in God. We are to fear and hope in God. Because God's real pleasure is not from him sitting back and saying, oh, man, I created that. Yep. That's mine over there, too. Yeah, I'm doing great. No, he takes pleasure in our hearts delighting in him. He's not saying, I want the one who who can pass the uh, Tabata class, who's gone through CrossFit 37 times, not in the strength of man's legs, but in the heart of his people, for those who fear him. When his people... Both then and now, reverence his name, serve him, and hope in him. That is what stirs the heart of God. And so why, why this message today? As we kind of see some hope coming out of COVID alone. Right? Has our response in the middle of that been praise? Has it been with thankfulness? Mine hasn't. Or as we get back to some things being normal, and we get back to some hurts and pains in our own lives, do we sit back and just praise God for the things that he has given us? And at the end of the day, do we fear and hope in his name is the delight of our heart, the actions we go out to praise his name or to praise people? This psalm has called us to worship and remind us why the Lord should be praised. And when we get these basic truths, why we ought to praise him because he's good, why we ought to praise him because he's good, and why we ought to praise him because he's good, our soul then will magnify the Lord. So here's three things I want to leave you with as we begin to close. Is today as you prepare to leave this building, go back to your cars, go back to your home, Will you do this? Will you choose praise over pride? Would you choose praise over pride? Why? Because the Lord is going to cast down the wicked and those who are prideful. But what's going to stir God's heart is you, is you and I not saying, well, I got this because my career is great or my schooling is good or because this and that. No, I got this because God has given it to me. Will you choose praise over pride? Next, would you choose rest over worry? Choose rest over worry. Why? You can just go through the text. He's healing. He's creating. He has great power. He lifts up the humble. He covers the heaven. He's providing. He's providing. And then he calls us to himself. What what is it in your life to where your pillows are stained with tears? Or when you go down to pray, you can't utter the words because of the heaviness you are feeling in your life. And we have yet to let those things go. Would you choose rest in the Lord over worry? And the last point is this. Would you accept his steadfast love? Would you accept his steadfast love? Verse 11, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, those who hope in his steadfast love. We don't have room for fear or uncertainty because God knows what's going on, what's next. So accept his steadfast love, his love, because he's cared for you. In the text, and I close with this, it's this word hesed. Used 250 times alone in the Old Testament, meaning God's covenant love, his covenant promise has been kept because he is loyal, because he is steadfast, and because he he is faithful. 
And he's shown all this to a people who was unfaithful, but he still kept showing his love, his Hesed love. And this is demonstrated ultimately about 2,000 years ago. When in the form of a son came down to earth to save you and I, did not consider himself to be equal with God. You want to talk about Hesed love? To while we were still sinning, Christ decided to go to a cross, bear his hands and bear his feet and give his body to be bruised. You want to talk about steadfast love to where he hung on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. And he did not say a word. He didn't want to quit. He didn't want to get down. You want to talk about faithful love to where he went down and he was buried and he rose again with all power so that you and I may live. And guess what? He didn't ask us for anything. He just says, believe, confess in your sins and you shall be saved. His Hesed love, would you accept that today? That at the crucifixion and the resurrection, demonstrating God's covenant to his people, Jesus takes the place on David's eternal throne, providing sinners to come into a community called the church, called believers, bound to his new covenant, and the children, and we are now called children of God, accept his steadfast love. Maybe you already done it. Maybe I'm talking to a room full of Christians. May you renew that steadfast love. May you then go out and invite others to share in that steadfast love because it saves. It brings us now to a place to enjoy God forever. I close with this quote from Spurgeon. He says, marks of new birth are fear and hope. They fear because they are sinners. They hope for God is merciful. They fear for he is great. They hope in him for he is good. Their fear sobers their hope and their hopes brighten their fears. God takes pleasure in both trembling and rejoicing. He takes pleasure in trembling and rejoicing. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. From the foundations of the world, there you were. There you are. You don't change. You don't go back on your word, Lord. You you hold us firm and tight together. Lord, for your people sitting in this room, those who may watch this later online, may the attitude we bring to you always be of praise, of thanksgiving, for the work you've done, for the love you shared, for for that hesed, steadfast love, God, that does not give up, that when we were down in our pit, you raised us, that when we were lost in our sin, you cleaned us. For those who wrestled with addiction, God, you freed us. It is because of hesed love and because of Jesus we have freedom in you. God, may we, your people, choose praise over pride, choose rest over worry, and accept the good things you have for us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Come on, let's stand and declare this again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you. Sing, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing.
Amen. I love that message today, right? That, hey, you are going to go through change in life. Do you know this? And your response might be to respond with fear and anxiety and what's this going to mean? But listen, there's one thing that doesn't change. God's love for you. His promises. That when we trust him by faith, right? He has good things waiting for us on the other side. So when you go through change this week, this month, whatever it is you're facing right now, and you're like, well, I don't like this change. Hey, choose praise. To praise him for who he is and that he can walk with you uh, through whatever it is you're facing, all right? And let that be your song this week. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful Memorial Day. May God richly bless you.